You're welcome to the Eastern Business Report right here on the Afia Business Morning on DSTV Channel 254 and Go TV Channel 17 on socials. We are at Afia TV Official. The Eastern Business Report is designed to bring you up to speed on business activities and issues affecting businesses within the southeastern region of Nigeria. It comes right after the global business news on the Afia Business Morning. My name is Ubong Kings. Welcome. You're watching the Eastern Business Report right here on the Afia Business this Morning. And uh, well, today we're going to be looking at something of grave importance which has to do with power because uh, Nigeria's national greed has struggled so far this year, uh, presenting clear evidence of the rot that has worsened the blackouts being experienced by households and businesses across the country. Interestingly, the, current, the country's electricity value chain, which involves generation, transmission, and distribution, is deeply troubled, and the operators' inadequacies are often explained as systemic collapse. Now, the power sector was privatized in November 2013, with the federal government handing over the distribution and generation uh, companies to core investors. Unfortunately, since the conclusion of this privatization, distribution companies have uh, emerged as the weakest link in the electricity value chain, grappling with substantial operational hurdles. Now, at this juncture, I have my guest who is uh, joining me in this conversation and is done other than Izu Anyago, who is a lawyer and public affairs analyst and will be talking about the power situation and business. You're welcome, Izu. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Kings. It's good I'm to have you. Love to be on your program. Yes, indeed. It's always a pleasure to have you. Now, um, why is this issue of power a recurrent decimal in Nigeria, given the otherwise huge, uh, well, huge in parentheses, uh, the huge investments in that sector? Thank you. Well, if I did hear you well, um, I think I heard you say the rot, use the word rot. Yes, rot, yes. You know, that is very significant. You know, work. And uh, you talk about rocks. The rocks started after the independence. So, before Nigeria independence, of course, you know, the population was below 40 million. And after independence, the white man went back to his country. Uh, and uh, Nigeria started enjoying and governing itself. From that time till now, the Nigerian population has risen from about 40 million to about 280 million. There is a projection that Nigerian population increases to about 50 million every five, year, five years. Are you with me? Yes, very well. Go ahead. Now, when you consider this um, progression, you find out that the government we've had after independence has been unable to plan ahead of time. The issue of electricity didn't start with administration of Bolame Tinubu. It didn't start with that of President Muhammad Bihari. It started way back from the time Nigeria, Nigeria gained independence. And if you ask me, we'll be talking about systemic corruption. And it, uh, when you talk of corruption, I would like to say that a touch on the issue of corruption is a touch on everything. Yeah. When you talk of corruption in Nigeria, you are talking about virtually every sector in Nigeria. I know one thing with corruption is that you may think corruption 
It's only when a policeman stops you on the road and he demands for bribe. That is the corruption as you may see it on the surface level. It goes beyond that. But when you talk of corruption, you talk of corruption even in the power sector. You talk of corruption even in, uh, in our education system. And it is a multiplier effect. Nigeria has been unable to go beyond 3,000 megawatts. Of course, the last administration did uh, try to improve some, uh, you know, embark on some developmental projects. And um, they were able to push the generation capacity of Nigeria from about 3,000 megawatts to about 3,700 megawatts. And today, the Minister of Power is telling us that Nigeria currently generates about 4,000 megawatts. But you know that Lagos alone needs about 12,000 megawatts to have a steady power supply. I'm talking of a single state in Nigeria. Needs about 12,000 megawatts to have 24 hours of electricity. But the whole nation is sharing just mm. about 4,000 megawatts. And if you ask me, I will tell you that even in the next 10 years, this problem will continue to be around. It will continue to be a major issue. Okay. Now, now. Uh, yes. Yeah, ju just before that you continue, let's also chip in this one as well. There has been several reported cases of uh, the power grid collapse. Even in recent times, uh, as documented on the Premium Times, Nigeria's electricity grid on Sunday the fourth day of February, collapsed yet again, uh, which of course threw several cities, including the nation's capital, Abuja, into darkness. Um, this also seems to be the order of the day. What are your thoughts on this? Let's put all of that together real quickly. Yes, you know, uh, I try to talk about Nigeria not having enough electricity to go around. Exactly, for, and then we're talking about collapse less. of grids. Yes, now, you can imagine when you do not have enough electricity and the one you have is not even sustainable. It would have been a better position if the 4,000 megawatt that Nigeria currently generates is steady, stable, and very, very predictable. But even as we are talking, the 4,000 megawatt that Nigeria is generating is very very volatile today we are talking about power breakdown and it's very funny because everybody is affected the other time you heard the report that the national assembly the senate was having a session and there was a power outage and they waited for long before the power to return it did not return and they had to adjourn of course the the the, the, the price of diesel is too much is on the high side. So um, the, the, the issue of uh, using alternatives, using diesel to power generator as an alternative source of uh, energy is no longer sustainable as well. So now, if you ask me, I will simply say that the issue of uh, a national grid collapse is another uh, form of corruption uh, because we do not have any reason why just uh, about 4,000 megawatts of electricity generation should be uh, a problem for, uh, for the discos, for the jenkos, you know? And we, 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 are, we are talking of um, a country that has not even, uh, that is not able to produce half of what the, country, what the cities need. And the literally is, is collapsing. So where do we go from here? Um, uh, um, yeah, it goes back to the issue of corruption. Um, we talk of uh, uh, vandalism also. You know, we also talk of uh, 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 bad financial management because uh, the Minister of uh, Power, uh, 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 Adela Bu, was talking about um, uh, the federal government owing some... Uh, uh, or uh, from, from some gas uh, company. 
um, about uh, 1.3 uh, 3, uh, 1 uh, 3 trillion dollars. So um, this debt uh, is quite uh, 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 an obstacle in the distribution of and uh, the supply of gas to these uh, generating companies. And uh, just recently, government was uh, able to pay about uh, one. Uh, 120 million of, out of that uh, 1.3 1. 3 trillion dollars and um, and um, the 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 issue of uh, distribution is another issue i think there's also an uh, issue of uh, sabotage because the federal government yeah. was uh, accusing um, the distribution company of not uh, being willing uh, 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 to supply the electricity generated by the Gen Coast. Yeah, and you, and, you and, asked and, me, and why yeah, is yes. this? Th that is true. Why is this so? Th th yes. That, that uh, brings me to something real quickly because of what or lack of time. Meanwhile, the federal government, quite recently, in fact, two days ago, actually has threatened to revoke the licenses of the power distribution companies over the persistent poor supply of, uh, of power across the country. The Minister of Power, the President of Adebayo Adelabu, made this known on his ex-handle. Now, do you think this action will bring the much-needed sanity or restructuring, for a lack of better phrase, to the power sector in Nigeria? It is, it, the action should go beyond um, revoking, revoking license. their licenses. All right. Yes, I think there's a criminal... Uh, uh, there's a criminal aspect of this uh, conduct because I was going to make this point. Right. If you recall that some time ago, uh, 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 an expert in the industry uh, uh, s s stated that South Africa, as a country, generates about uh, sixty thousand megawatts. Okay, and. Um, and uh, Nigeria generates about uh, 4,000 megawatts. No, 3,000 at that time he was, you know, making this report. But you won't believe that uh, Nigeria makes more money from the 3,000 megawatts of electricity that it generates than South Africa makes from 60,000 megawatts. Hmm. So what this tells you is that, is that um, there's a lot of money chasing the little supply of electricity that is available in Nigeria. Um, the, 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 the distribution company, I think, do not want to uh, uh, um, go beyond uh, this uh, capacity that they are currently supplying or distributing because they believe that uh, the more you have, the more they're able to meet the demand and uh, of electricity, the more the the the, the 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 or the lesser the, the capacity less to, yes the less money okay. or the lesser the capacity they will the, or, or the lesser the capacity of making uh, uh income yeah from that uh, uh, uh distribution so so there is a, a in business uh, uh sector we use, we call it racketeering or profiteering you know when you hold goods when you hold supply you when you hold services because you want to make more gain mm. out of the little that is available so so this is not just uh, uh unethical it is criminal and it is uh punishable so uh it, it shouldn't there shouldn't it shouldn't uh, the minister should not just uh uh, uh give them um revoke uh, licenses warnings. Yeah, you know, you know, revoke licenses or, or give them warnings and all. That. I, I think Nigeria should sit up. It is time for this government to begin to function and act sensibly. Tell the distribution companies that if they don't supply uh, electricity that has already been generated, you will revoke their license. For me, it seems like a child's play. It should come with a sanction, not just warning them. But the government, the problem is that the government does not you know, uh, uh, see itself as uh, being uh, in charge. They do not uh, think they have responsibility for the citizen. For me, uh, a lot of things has to be changed. Okay, real quickly, just before we let you go, Nigeria has been described as the giant of Africa. 
and uh, to a large extent that does not seem to play out especially now now with this strange epileptic power situation in the country and with other almost almost quite a number of other african countries um, um doing better than nigeria in this place of power generation and distribution do you ever think Nigeria would take its place, its pride of place as the giant of Africa, or have lost it completely? Well, I'm sorry, I do, do not uh, agree that Nigeria is a giant of Africa. Maybe we might agree if we are talking in terms of population. But of course, you know that population doesn't translate to uh, capacity. Um, and there are a lot of people who are suffering from jajatism, you know, that very tall, huge, and uh, abnormal at the same time. So it is always good to be on average level so that you can function optimally. Nigeria, as it stands now, is suffering from jajatism. And jajatism is a disease. And uh, not only is Nigeria suffering from population issue because right now we are overpopulated uh, nigeria is currently chasing the population of the united states when you look at the um the uh, 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 per capita income of the united states and the gdp of that uh united states to that of nigeria mm. you know that nigeria is getting to a stage where it will you know either collapse as a nation or implode. Um, this government must sit up. Let us forget title. Let us forget our position in Africa. Let us sit down. Let us cut our coats, cut into our clothes. Sit down and look at the issues that is currently facing us. And for me, this is not a time to start to, um, you know, I mean, because there's things has really gone bad. That's why I highlighted the word rot that you used during your introduction. The system is rotten. And all we need now is for this government to go back to the drawing board, start from square one. See this um, problem as having never been um, uh, um, tackled before. Because for me, Nigeria problem has never been effectively uh, 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 addressed. All we have been doing is, you know, cosmetic um, uh, um, exercise. You know, uh, the last administration of President Muhammad Buhari was the worst for this reason. And um, this government of uh, Muhammad of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, has been trying to. To deflect uh, 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 criticism, putting blame on the past administration. But if you recall, that is what uh, that's exactly what the last administration did, blaming that of Jonathan and blaming the the problem on a, a, a 16 years of PDP regime. But that is not what we need. Our house must be on deck. Nigeria must go back to the drawing board. Right. The, the the government must be serious and stop pretending to be tackling Nigeria problem. You know, Nigerians are not fools. By the time we see actions, by the time the government comes down to the level of, you know, going down the trenches and doing the right thing, Nigeria will actually acknowledge the, 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 the government's efforts at uh, trying to resolve these issues. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, That's a good place to leave it right now. Thank you so much, Izu Aniago, for being part of the program this morning thank you for your time thank you in case you're just joining in i've been playing host to izu aniago who is a lawyer and public affairs analyst and we looked at the past situation and business in nigeria generally of course it affects the southeastern part of nigeria but in case you're just joining in not to worry you can go to our facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash afia tv official go right there and you see um this this is live right now on the facebook page and be part of the conversation drop up a comment or two and uh, let's get interactive i however regret to inform you that this will be the size of the package today on the eastern business report thank you for watching the affair business morning returns on monday 
my name is Ubon King. 